This is the aluminum battery we have. It's made of aluminum and graphite. Both materials are quite cheap. Right now it's uh, lighting up a uh, LED light. Lithium has ruled for decades, but its reign is not eternal. Somewhere in a Beijing laboratory, a different metal, one we thought was useless, has begun to stir. Its name is aluminum, and it carries a story that refuses to be ignored. For years, it sat in the background, abundant, cheap, endlessly recycled, yet dismissed as unfit for the heart of a battery. Scientists had tried and failed, leaving it in the shadows of lithium's dominance. But now, quiet voices from that lab speak of something different, of a chemistry that bends the old rules, of a future that might no longer belong to lithium alone. The EV world isn't slowing down. In the United States, the headlines can be deceiving. Political shifts and policy changes have left many convinced that the electric vehicle dream is slipping away, sinking beneath waves of uncertainty. But the numbers tell another story entirely. In 2024, Americans bought 1.3 million new electric cars, a record. That's a 7.3% jump from the year before, even while the overall car market crept up by just 2%. And the momentum shows no sign of slowing, with projections pushing well past 1.5 million in 2025. Across the Atlantic, the United Kingdom's transformation is moving even faster. One in every five new cars sold last year was fully electric, a shift that only a decade ago would have seemed unthinkable. Showrooms brim with silent models. Charging points appear where petrol pumps once stood. But this rapid growth hides a deeper problem. Every EV needs a battery. Every battery demands minerals, lithium, nickel, and cobalt, each one dug from the earth at great cost. As sales climb, so does the pressure on the supply chain. And with that pressure comes a question the industry can no longer ignore. What happens when lithium isn't enough? The lithium wall. Lithium earned its crown for a reason. Light, reactive, and capable of storing impressive amounts of energy, it became the beating heart of everything from smartphones to spacecraft. In the early days of electric cars, it was the only element that could make the dream possible. Its chemistry gave birth to batteries that were small enough, light enough, and powerful enough to compete with gasoline. But lithium is not without limits. Mining is costly, both economically and environmentally. Supply is concentrated in just a handful of countries, leaving the industry vulnerable to geopolitical friction and market swings. Prices spike, projects stall, and timelines stretch. Even recycling, while promising, is not yet widespread enough to close the loop. As EV adoption surges, the demand curve threatens to outpace production capacity. The result is a wall, one built not from a lack of will, but from the physical and political realities of the element itself. To keep climbing, the industry needs more than incremental tweaks to lithium-ion technology. It needs alternatives, materials that are cheaper, safer, and more abundant. And that search has led researchers to metals long overlooked. Aluminum, the false hope. On paper, aluminum seemed like the obvious answer. It's one of the most abundant metals on Earth, endlessly recyclable, and already woven into global manufacturing. In theory, it offers triple the energy potential of lithium per atom. Each aluminum atom can release three electrons, compared to lithium's one. That should make it a powerhouse for storing and delivering energy. But theory often falls apart in the lab. Aluminum ions, small and fiercely charged, cling too tightly to surrounding materials. They move sluggishly through electrolytes, reacting in ways that damage electrodes and shorten battery life. The solutions that worked, like expensive ionic liquid electrolytes, 
were unstable, corrosive, and dangerous to handle. Energy densities lagged behind lithium, voltages stayed low, and performance dropped quickly with repeated charging. For decades, aluminum batteries remained a footnote, an idea too flawed to be practical. Engineers returned to lithium again and again, refining it while aluminum gathered dust in research journals. Yet some researchers refused to give up, convinced that a different approach could rewrite the rules. And in a quiet lab in Beijing, that persistence is beginning to show results. A lab in Beijing. At the Institute of Advanced Structural Technology, part of the Beijing Institute of Technology, a small team has been working in relative obscurity. Their goal was simple to state but notoriously difficult to achieve. Turn aluminum from a theoretical curiosity into a functional, long-lasting battery chemistry. Over the years, many teams had tried only to watch promising cells degrade within months, their performance collapsing under the strain of repeated cycles. The Beijing group approached the problem differently. Instead of forcing aluminum to fit into existing designs, they rethought the environment in which it operated. They focused on stability, on preventing the violent reactions that made aluminum so difficult to tame. After years of trial and error, they emerged with results bold enough to catch global attention. A battery that retained over 90% of its capacity after 10,000 charge-discharge cycles, a lifespan several times greater than most lithium-ion cells. It was still only a laboratory demonstration, far from mass production. But the claim alone was enough to turn whispers into questions. What had they changed? And could it finally push aluminum into the spotlight it had been denied for decades? The electrolyte shift. The first breakthrough came from replacing the most troublesome part of traditional aluminum battery designs, the electrolyte. Older systems relied on aluminum chloride in ionic liquids, substances that were expensive, corrosive, and dangerously sensitive to moisture. Over time, they degraded, eating away at the electrodes and releasing toxic fumes if mishandled. The Beijing team chose a different path. They introduced an inert aluminum fluoride salt into the electrolyte. At first glance, it was an unlikely candidate, but under a microscope, its structure told a different story. A porous 3D framework that let aluminum ions slip through with far less resistance. This not only boosted conductivity, but also gave the electrolyte a resilience older chemistries lacked. The result was a more stable environment for ions to travel in, one less prone to side reactions that weakened the battery over time. It meant the cells could endure thousands of cycles without the corrosive decay or EV that had doomed earlier prototypes. Stability, once aluminum's greatest weakness, had become its new foundation. And the researchers were just getting started. Protecting the electrodes. Even with a stable electrolyte, the electrodes themselves remained vulnerable. Aluminum's tendency to deposit unevenly during charging led to jagged crystalline growths, dendrites, that could pierce the separator, short-circuit the cell, and, in extreme cases, cause fires. Over time, these growths also fractured the electrode structure, reducing capacity and cycle life. The Beijing team's solution was deceptively simple. Coat the electrode surfaces with a microscopic layer of fluoroethylene carbonate. This created what battery scientists call a solid electrolyte interface, or SEI. Think of it as an invisible shield, thin enough not to impede ion flow, yet strong enough to guide aluminum into forming smooth, uniform layers. Numbers that matter. In the end, the proof was in the performance. The Beijing cells operated within a voltage range of 0.1 to 2.4 volts, lower than most lithium-ion chemistries, but stable across thousands of cycles. 
After 10,000 charge-discharge cycles, they still retained over 90% of their original capacity. That kind of longevity could mean decades of service in real-world applications. Energy density, while improved, still trailed behind lithium. At roughly 150 watt-hours per kilogram, these aluminum cells offer less than half the capacity of top-tier nickel-manganese cobalt NMC, lithium-ion batteries, which can exceed 300 weight kg. For electric cars chasing maximum range, that's a deal-breaker. But for stationary storage, where space and weight matter far less, the numbers are compelling. Safety, recyclability, long cycle life, and abundant raw materials combine into an attractive equation. If they can be produced cheaply at scale, these batteries could fill a gap lithium can't easily cover. Massive, long-lived energy storage for the grid. And in an era where renewable power needs somewhere to go when the sun sets and the wind stops, that gap is widening by the day. Where it fits. Not every breakthrough needs to power a car to change the world. Aluminum ion batteries, even with their lower energy density, could excel in a different arena. Stationary energy storage. Solar farms, wind parks, and local microgrids all need vast reserves of energy ready to release when generation dips. In these places, weight is irrelevant. Size is negotiable. But safety, cost, and lifespan mean everything. Here, aluminum's strengths line up perfectly. Abundance removes the geopolitical choke points that plague lithium supply. Long cycle life slashes replacement costs. And inherent safety reduces the risks of fires that have haunted large lithium installations. Revolutions rarely announce themselves with fanfare. Often, they happen quietly, in labs, in conversations, in slow, steady improvements that only reveal their true impact years later. Aluminum ion batteries might not be the flashiest breakthrough. They won't promise lightning fast charging or record breaking range. However, they offer something just as vital durability, safety, abundance, and the opportunity to alleviate pressure on a strained supply chain. In the unseen corners of science, where persistence meets creativity, a silent transformation is underway. One that could help build the foundation of our clean energy future, one stable cycle at a time.